today we're going to look at the mitered square and we're going to show you how you can join your mitered squares to each other so that you don't have to sew them together you can knit them together as you go so this is just a small sample but if you make your squares bigger depending on how big you make it you could make a whole afghan this way and you wouldn't have to sew these seams all of the mitered squares seam in the center are all pointing towards the center so let's show you how to do this today we're going to do a project where we use a technique we've done in a previous video on how to make a mitered square so today we're going to do a video on showing how to attach mitered squares to each other so that you can make a whole blanket without ever having to sew them together so to do this procedure we need to have a sort of a loose cast on we don't want to do a long tail cast on because it kind of leaves a tight tighter edge and so for this particular cast on we're going to put a slip knot on our yarn but we're at the end we're going to take the slip knot out we're not actually going to use this as the stitch we're going to take it out at the end but we're going to use what's called a backward loop cast on it makes for kind of a baggy cast on which typically you don't want but for this project we do so we're not going to count this slip knot as one of our stitches but we're going to go ahead and cast on using this backward loop method so you just put it around your finger slide it underneath and pull that's a stitch around your finger two three four five six seven eight nine ten for this example and for doing a mitered square you want to have an even number of stitches plus one so I've got ten stitches I want it to be just a little bit bigger eleven twelve thirteen so that's our twelve plus one we have thirteen stitches not counting the slip knot one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen so now we're going to turn our work and we're going to knit one row and we're going to drop off that slip stitch so when you're knitting back and you've used this cast on you're going to notice this big long bar in between your needles that just kind of happens with this particular cast on so try and keep your needles as close together as you can don't don't pull them too tight or away from each other try to keep them as close to each other as you can and get these stitches knit off and then you'll see this cast on has got kind of a big baggy line to it but we're going to use that to our advantage in this particular project it'll make it a lot easier for us to see where to pick up stitches and when you're attaching squares you don't want to attach the square to an edge that is too tight and this is a very loose cast on so there here's our last stitch in our pattern and then I'm just going to drop the slip stitch out and pull it to get rid of it so I should have my 12 plus 1 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 plus 1 now if you want to know how to make the mitered square you can go back and watch the video that I made on it but for a real quick and easy explanation we're going to make a little mitered square out of these stitches so to do the mitered square I need to find the center three stitches because the center three is where I'm going to be working my decrease each time so I just kind of count backwards until I have three stitches in the middle so I have five stitches on this end 
five stitches on that end and three in the middle. So I'm going to work five stitches, work a decrease, then knit the five stitches. I'm also, as I knit this, I'm going to always slip the first stitch and give myself a nice border. So there I'm going to work five stitches, two, three, four, five. I'm going to slip one as if to knit. I'm going to knit two together. And I'm going to slip this stitch over. This slipped stitch comes over. And I worked a double decrease. And then I knit to the end. Again, you can go back and watch my original video on working a mitered square. But I just finished and knit all the way down. So now we're just going to knit back to the beginning. I'm going to put a slip stitch edge on this. Slip the first stitch. Knit my way back to the beginning. And then we'll work another double decrease row. Whoops. So we finished our square and I'm going to go ahead and just bring that last stitch through. There we go. Now when you're looking at this square, the cast on edge that we started with is here and here. This side and the bottom. So in order to attach our squares, we're going to start the next square and pick up and knit stitches along this edge here. So I want to arrange my square so that the cast on edge is here and here. Kind of like a backwards seven. Here and here. So what I need to do is I need to pick up the same amount of stitches as what I started with. So I need to pick up five stitches along this edge and then I'll add additional stitches. So my very first stitch that I'm going to pick up is going to be right here. This was the very first slipped stitch that I did and there's conveniently a nice little hole there and that's where I'm going to pick up my first stitch. So I'm going to use a contrast color of yarn just to make this a little easier to see. So we're going to use this bright blue. <clears throat> so I am going to go into this very first slipped stitch and I'm going to put a loop of this bright blue around my needle and I'm going to pick up that stitch. So I need to pick up five, a, a total of five stitches here. So I need to just kind of double check as I go and make sure I don't put too many in. So there's my first one, two, three, just kind of evenly space these out, four, five. So I have my five stitches. So now I'm going to do that same backward loop to cast on the rest. There's five, 
six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Thirteen stitches that gives me the five stitches on either end and the three stitches in the middle. So now I'm going to knit the first row. I have the stitches I picked up and the stitches I just added. And I am going to knit the first row. So now we have our five stitches we picked up along this edge, our three stitches in the middle, and then five stitches here on the end. So now we're going to start making our next square. So we've come down here to our last stitch. We pull it through as our cast off. Here's my back side. Kind of looks a little wonky because uh, the way we pick up stitches, but that's the back side. Here's the front side. So we have two squares now together. And now we want to do exactly the same thing. We want to use this square and this square, and we want to now pick up a third square. So we want to use this edge here to pick up the next square. This was our, our extra cast on stitches. So we're going to turn the work just like we did earlier. We're going to use just this color here, just these five stitches, and we're going to pick up five stitches, and then we're going to continue to cast on another five stitches. So again, I'm going to use a contrast color just to make it easier for you to see. We're going to pick up five stitches here, and then we're going to cast on the additional stitches we need. We're not going to pick up stitches along this edge until later. I'm going to pick up here right where my last slipped stitch was. Nice little hole right there. And now I'm going to pick up five stitches. There's two. three, kind of evenly space them across the row, there's my five stitches, now I'm going to pick up my additional stitches to make my 13, five, I hope you can see why we're doing this each time, because we're bending these stitches into a square. I need to just use five on the bottom here, and then the five will go up the edge, and then I'll have my third square. So I've just got my five plus the additional stitches to make up my 13. Now I'm going to knit a row, and then we'll make the square. down to my last stitch. Go ahead and clip it. Pull it through. Now I have my three squares finished. It's a little hard to see here, but the seam where each one of these squares comes together are all pointing towards the center which makes for a nice one. This last square will also point to the center. So if you were using a different kind of double decrease where maybe you could see the stitches with a raised up area, then you, you would see all of the seams would all be pointing together. That's the back side, that's the front side. So now what we want to do is we want to pick up stitches here and stitches here so that 
when this square comes together it ends up here so we need to pick up five stitches here five stitches here and we're going to need the three stitches in the center to do the decrease and I'm going to use another another contrast color so you can see the difference this time I'm going to use a green and we're going to pick up five stitches along this edge cast on three and then we're going to pick up the five stitches here leave myself a tail pull that through one two three four five. I think too what I'm going to do is because I'd like to pick up a corner stitch in each one of these corners to give it a nice secure fit I'm going to make the three stitches in the middle I'm going to pick up one pink one blue one turquoise and that'll be my three stitches in the center one two three by doing that I'm not going to have a hole right here in the center so I have my five I have my three and now I need to pick up five stitches along this edge one two three four five so we'll double check to make sure I have the right amount of stitches I have five I have three and I have five so now I'm going to knit back and then I'm going to do the mitered square. Okay, we've gotten to the end here, and I could do one of two things. I could go ahead and cut my yarn and pull this through, and we'd have our square, or we could start our next set of squares. And all you would have to do to do that is use this as your very first stitch and then pick up five stitches here and then cast on the additional stitches needed to make your 13 and then you could start your next square. For the sake of this video I'm going to go ahead and cast this last stitch off but you could keep going if you wanted to just continue to grow your blanket. I'm going to pull this last stitch through, square it up a little bit. As you can see, since we picked up those stitches in the center, we don't have any holes, which looks real nice. Here's the original square we started with. Then we added the blue, the pink, and the green. So now just take this out to a bigger project instead of only having 13 stitches if you made your squares much, much bigger. And depending on how many squares you want in your blanket, you could do a series of, of these kind of four squares and then sew them together. Or you can just do four humongous squares and make a big blanket. But since we, when we did this project, I always slipped the first stitch. So now along the edge, on the outside of every square, I have a very nice 
slip stitch edge where if I wanted to now pick up stitches along any one of these squares it's very easy to see the holes that the slip stitch edge leaves so it'd be very easy to start another mitered square let me grab my pink here if I wanted to start a new square I could go right here into the very first slipped stitch and pull a stitch through and then I could go ahead and pick up five stitches then cast on the additional stitches and my next square would be right here I hope that's helped you learn something new if you have any more questions about the mitered squares or a mitered square blanket please leave your comments in the section below thanks again for watching bye